Today I would like to address the attention to another bass guitar, which I find is a bit undervalued and underrated in general. I'm talking about this one, which is a Gibson Grabber G3. I bought this one new, believe it or not, um, in the late 70s, early 80s, I believe, from a friend who used to own a music shop in Frankfurt, Germany, and unfortunately had to close his shop and he had to get rid of all the stock instruments that he still had left in his shop. So he offered this one to me for a very decent price, and it's a 1978 Gibson Grabber G3, which I have been owning since that day. So the story behind the G3 is that Gibson came up with a new idea of put, pulling out lower budget instruments um, rather than high price instruments in the 70s. Gibson unfortunately was always a little bit in the shadow of all the Fender instruments. I mean, rightfully so, Fender was the leading and still is one of the leading companies on the market for bass guitars uh, because the Fender Precision and the Fender Jazz Bass in particular were just absolutely groundbreaking instruments at the time and they still are. And Gibson was desperately trying to come up with some alternative ideas and alternative versions for the electric bass. So the designers always tried to tried their very best to not copy anything that Fender had done before. Um, fairly successful and fairly unsuccessful over the years. So in the 70s, early 70s, they came up with a ba bass called the Ripper bass, which was released in 1973. And at the same time, they also put out the, the Grabber bass, the G1 Grabber bass. So almost identical instruments in, this, in the terms of body shape, uh, whereas the Ripper bass had a neck through design and the Grabber bass had a, a bolt-on neck, a cheaper version of the Ripper bass, so to speak. But also the Ripper bass had two humbucking pickups and the Grabber bass had just one humbucking pickup, but it had a sliding pickup. You could actually slide it between several positions, which was quite an interesting idea. Not absolutely brand new at the time, but the execution was very well done. So that was a very interesting and unique instrument, or so both of them were. And two years later, in 75, they came up with a second version of the Grabber bass, the G3, which was practically the same body, everything the same, like the Grabber 1, the G1, but it had three single coil pickups. And they are wired like these two with a toggle switch, and the pickups are wired like um, these two pickups functioning as a humbucker, then the other end, these two as a humbucker, and the middle position is all three pickups on and building sort of a one and a half humbucker pickup uh, wiring. And um, yeah, and they sound quite interesting. Um, and then obviously you have a passive tone control. Closed. Unlike the Fender bass guitars, the Gibson Grabber and Ripper basses had uh, quite a big body, but very flat body, as you can see. And uh, it's also quite nicely shaped, if you can see the contours of that bass. So it's actually lying very, very good on your body. It's quite comfortable to have it sitting on your lap and your elbow is just like that. And it's almost very comfortable to play. And also it's very, very good to play with a pick. The thing about the Grabber G3 is that you can almost never get it to sound muddy. It's just, it, it's not that it doesn't have low end, but it definitely has a lot of top and high end, which makes it, funny enough, um, 
after all these years later, today, a very modern bass um, <clears throat> for pretty much modern music styles. Even going like um, when you go to listen to a band like Muse, for example, um, that sound can be supported quite well when you add distortion and extreme distortion to your sound. You almost want to make it sound like a guitar. Other than that, it's a very, very simple design. It's a bolter neck with four screws. It's got a through body string construction with a typical, very simple bridge construction. It's got a free free single coil pickups with just one passive tone control, volume control and toggle switch for the three positions that I already described. It's got a maple neck in this case. They also released a couple of, I think, with rosewood uh, fretboards. But it's a very nice neck. It's quite chunky, I have to say. If you don't like that, well, maybe it's not your thing, but I, I like chunky necks, so this is quite good. It's got an angled headstock. The early versions, the early versions of the grabber bases and the ripper bases had the normal Gibson headstock, which was like a, tra um, a trapeze-like, very big headstock, and big tuners, big shallow tuners. Now the later versions uh, of the grabber, which came out in '75, the G3 grabber, had a triangular headstock like this one. And they also, in the beginning, had bigger tuners, but then they switched to smaller tuners, the closed shallow tuners, uh, like in this case with a small axis, reducing weight uh, on the headstock, which makes it really not neck heavy. And actually, it actually pulls into the other direction a little bit when you have, have it sitting on your lap. Uh, but just very simple. It really sits very well on your lap and also hangs very well on the neck when you have it strapped to your body. So it is all over quite a good design. I heard the rumor once, I'm not sure if it's true, but that Carol Kay was actually sort of involved in the design a little bit. I may be totally wrong, but I remember hearing that at one point in my career. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, um, as regards the serial number, this is a typical 70s, uh, mid 70s Gibson serial number, an eight digit serial number. On my base, it starts with the number seven. The first number in that eight digit stands for the decade, which is 70s, seven. Then it's followed by the numbers two, six, eight. These, these numbers represent the day this uh, base was stamped. The date my one was stamped on 268 was the Monday, September 25th of 1970. Eight, because that's the next digit in my serial number is an eight. Fifth number in the, in the whole digit is an eight. So the first and the fifth number represent the year of manufacture, which is 78 in my case. Uh, the second, third and fourth number in the digit is the date of, of stamping, which as I told you is the 25th of September 1978. And then the last three digits, in my case it's an 005. Now the last three digits from what I heard are representing in which factory that base was um, made and it was the ranking in the production line of that particular day. Uh, so all numbers between 001 and 500 represent the factory Gibson factory in Kalamazoo, the original Gibson factory which then is in my case, because I have number 005, so which is the, the fifth instrument being stamped on that particular day in the Kalamazoo factory. So that's all the details about this instrument, and it also gives you an, also a little bit of an idea how to identify your Gibson bass in case you have one, uh, a, sort of a, a vintage one. As I mentioned before, uh, the Ripper and the Grabber basses have the same body design, and with all the bases in common, they are, all the electronics and everything are mounted on the scratch plate, which then reduced costs during the production process. It's just a very, a very cost-effective instrument. And other than that, I can only say it's really worth trying if you get uh, hands on one. Um, I know Gibson guitars are not everybody's piece of cake but they are worth checking out, to be honest. They have a very unique sound, um, just their own voice, and they've been neglected for many, many years and decades, but 
it's starting that people start to div to discover them new. And um, they are going to go up in value, I guess, in a couple of uh, years. And um, so maybe you want to grab one and, uh, if you are able to find one. Of course, only if you like them. So something I would like to mention about this particular base, because I'm not sure if it's valid for every Gibson G3 base, but the string tension on this one is quite high. It's, the, the strings are really tight. So I'm, I'm usually one of these 45 to 105 guys, uh, but I had to string this one with 40s to 100s. And then you get, you get a really nice sort of medium tension where you can still bend the strings very nice. Because that bass has so much top end, obviously that's very inviting for playing chords. 